Welcome back, adventurers. This is your adventure artist, AJ Moore. And I am back for part three, baby. We're back at the gorge. I couldn't go to the other part of the gorge because the rains came just like I thought they were coming and it flooded everything because that's a flash flood area. So I'm gonna check out this end of the gorge and see what we can find. And it's probably gonna be wild too. You already know, because it's nature, y'all. Hello all, your narrator here, back at the gorge with our adventurer after the heavy rains have passed. Sadly, most of the critters seem to have been all washed away. However, it is good to see some fish still swimming about in the muck. Well, since the critters may be scarce today, there's always something cool to find out in nature, and it seems as though He's looking at some plants, so let's see what this is all about, shall we? See this good ground cover right here? This plant is called the Red Ludwiga. Red Ludwiga. Yeah, see this is an amphibious plant, which means it could live in the dirt and it could also live in the water as well. It's great for coverage because it grows really, really dense and critters like to hide in it. But when they start out, they start out with these nice, lush green, right? Mm -hmm. And as they grow up, the, the leaves turn red in coloration. And the stems are red as well. And they can get about 12 to 20 inches. So you got to trim it. Now, if you want to propagate this plant, uh, you can just cut off the tops. Cut off the tops of these. Like if I was to take this top right here and I stick it back in the dirt, it'll grow a new plant. When it gets warm, in the in summertime, they produce these yellow flowers just above the surface, and those will drop seeds off. And the seeds will go down into the dirt and grow a whole new plant. But yeah, red Luwiga, and it's really nice. I'm gonna put this down here and propagate it. I probably should have checked for snakes, right? There we go, it'll grow up another plant. <laughs> so let's have a look at this. This is called a balloon vine. Balloon vine. Um, or also is called love in a puff. <laughs> That's kind of funny uh, because it grows these little puffs right here. And this is a creeping vine that grows in uh, Australia, Africa, and all over North America. And it likes to grow along rivers. People consider it a weed when it grows along the river. It'll just pretty much creep and take over this whole area. But it's a really cool vine. I don't even know where the beginning of it is because it just reaches out with these little tendrils here and it grabs on the thing. So it just, it'll crawl all over this area. Uh, but people take these little fruits here uh, and they tear them open and they eat the seeds. You can eat the seeds from it. And you can also cook, you know, fry the fruit like a, like a plantain. And they also use it for medicine it's rather nauseous. It'll make you nauseous though, if the, uh, from what I'm told. Uh, so they use it for medicine as well. And it also is a great laxative. <laughs> and uh, so if I eat this now, there's a lot of bushes here and a lot of leaves I can, you know, handle my business. But yeah, the balloon, balloon vine. Love in a puff. And now it's time to feast your eyes on the element of surprise. It is time to open it up. Ah, the love puff. Look at those seeds. Look how that was just full of air. See those seeds there? So as we follow our balloon vine, it led us to this nice plant here. This is called a nosclea. Nosclea. And uh, it is a, it's an evergreen shrub and or tree if it grows up like a tree. But it's native to the uh, Africa, Asia, and the Oceania. A quick geographic lesson for everyone. Oceania 
is a region made up of over a thousand islands throughout the Central and South Pacific Ocean. That's 14 countries, including Australia. There are three island regions included, Melanesia, Micronesia, and Polynesia. Yes, that includes Hawaii. Aloha and mahalo. It's a flowering plant and it gets its name, you know, the, the ancient Greek word for Nas is ship, you know, like a, like a ship, a big boat. And then Cleo, which means to close. So the ports on the ship, where they put the capsules, they open and close. So I reckon that's what these, these pods here do. This is probably the end of the life of one of the flowers. All these little stamens here, they're gonna drop off. And this is where the seeds are gonna go out. Nasquia. Well, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this nature show to bring you a very noisy train. Dinosaur come ooh, check this out. Dinosaur just found something cool. Check it out. This vine right here, yet another vine. Uh, and this one right here is called the Smilax Bonanox. That's the tough name to say. But it's also called the Saul Greenbrier. Saul Greenbrier. Or some call it the Zazaparilla. Zazaparilla. That's got a nice tune to it. And it's also called the Tramp's Trouble. Mm -hmm. The Tramp's Trouble, I guess. Mm, I'm not even gonna go there, y'all. But anyway, I could understand why it's the Tramp's Trouble because if the Tramp is out there, you know, tramping and stuff like that, he might get caught on all these spines. There's a whole bunch of spines on this thing. And these spines are basically to protect it from certain things, I reckon. Uh, so don't walk out here barefoot, but there's a whole bunch of these creeping vines and it's also a flowering vine. So it'll produce a fruit and the fruit is mainly for creatures to eat. A whole bunch of critters that come out here, whether it be possums or raccoons, uh, maybe certain insects, who knows? They'll come and eat the fruit from here. But yeah, the zazaparilla, is, there's a whole bunch of it growing out here. And this thing will grow probably eight meters or more probably. And it's native to this part. It's native to Texas, so that's cool. You can also find it in Florida, uh, a lot of the southeastern U.S. Zazaparilla. Zazaparilla! Who knew? I wish there was flowers on it, though, because then I would eat them. Just playing. Look at this. This plant here with this little delicate flower is called the American water willow. Water willow. And it has colonies of stems that grow underneath the soil. But yeah, it just grows alongside rivers mostly. And it is native here. And it produces these little delicate flowers, almost looks like an orchid that has two curved petals, two that shoot out the side and one that shoots out the back. It's not a vine or anything, but it's beautiful. I know that much. And something else I know is these little balloons they're all over the place. They're just growing all over. It's pretty nice. They'll probably start blooming a little bit more in another week or so. But yeah, that's them. I'm gonna crawl off. Wow, all this behind me, this is called uh, Sebania sesbana. Sespen. Now, this is a Sebania species, so there's a lot of different types of these. These are all uh, perennials. Uh, I do believe this is the Sisbana. They grow almost like a forest. And as you can see, it's a little forest behind me. If you cultivate them, they'll grow from one center. But out in the wild, when they get broken and stuff, they'll grow branches out. But normally they're just one. They, can grow, they grow really, really fast in one season because they're perennials. Uh, so they're gonna keep coming back. They grow up, they can get up to eight meters really, really quick. A lot of these guys grow in Asia, Central America. They have these, they grow these little flowers and they have these little soft leaves on here. And they like to uh, uh, cultivate the leaves and use them as uh, green manure and stuff like that. And these little flowers on here, uh, I'm not sure about this particular species, but 
there's some species of this that you could eat. Some cultures cultivate the, uh, the flowers here. The other species grow similar flowers just like this, and these could be fried up, you know, like a plantain or a banana. It's real good. I know they do in Cambodia. I'm just not sure if it's this species, so you'd have to check the species of plant. Sabania sesbana. Sesbin. So now I'm kneeled down under here, and I am looking up underneath this canopy of the Sabania. And it's really cool because these are planted often for uh, uh, partial shade when they are planting different crops or different trees. If you want to grow some different plants in, a, in an area, but you don't want them to get too much sun because they're just a seedling, they'll plant these around them because the sun can still go through these willow branches and leaves very, very easily and provide filtered light, which is great. Another thing these, these do for the wildlife is they provide hiding places like there's locusts, all kinds of locusts in here, really big locusts, medium-sized ones, there's lizards, uh, even snakes. That they're just hanging out in here, but this is the canopy. And these guys get really tall, so it provides nice filtered light and you won't burn up. So it's good for the plants. Look at this right here. Now this grows in the Mediterranean, but this ain't the Mediterranean, baby. This is Texas. And what this is, this is called Papaver cetigerum. Cetigerum. Now, not to be confused with its cousin, Papaver somniferum. That's opium. Opium. Mm-hmm. This looks just like an opium flower. They also call this the dwarf bread poppy, and it's also called the poppy of Troy. Now, this one also produces those seeds as well, but you can't produce opium from this one. This can get about maybe 30 inches tall or so, and it's a really beautiful flower. Now, the opium is red, but this one has like a fuchsia color, like a light plum color. The fruit that it produces is hermaphroditic, so it doesn't need a male plant to, you know, to fertilize it so it can produce this, the fruit. But that's what this is. It's really cool to see here. And I guess it gets transplanted, some seeds uh, someone brought over through some way. But this is native to the Mediterranean area. These are the little seed pods right here where the little poppy seeds are. Let's check one of these out. So once again, it is time to feast your eyes on the element of surprise. It is time to open it up. See that? Those are all the poppy seeds. Look at them all just falling out. Look at, look, my goodness, look, oh my, I'm about to make me some salad dressing or something. Look at all that. See each compartment. The poppy seed has different compartments. And they all house the seeds. Ooh, wait, look at all those seeds. Now these right here, these aren't the little black ones that you get on biscuits and stuff. The black ones that you get are from the opium plant. These right here, these are probably used in like salad dressing and stuff like that. And they don't contain any of the opium, but studies have shown that they do have a morphine alkaloid, which is very interesting. We opened it up. It's pretty. Wow, I'm sure glad you didn't find an opium poppy field, else we would have had to flee from the authorities. That would have been fun. Woo, so that was the adventure, y'all, of part three of the gorge. This is to be continued. We got, we got to double back and see what happened after that rain, you know? But man, it was so much. It was cool seeing that little opium plant, even though it's not opium. <laughs> but let me know what you thought about it all in the comments, y'all. But join me on the next one for part four in the gorge. It's gonna be crazy. This is nature, y'all.
Thanks for watching the video, y'all. So give me a like, show me some love, leave a comment, let me know what you thought. And come on now, subscribe, subscribe. Do I even have to say it? But I'm gonna say it, subscribe, y'all. Take care, thanks.